Good morning everyone. I'm out here at Hatcher Pass again and today I have the uh, Canon RF100 to 400 5.6 f8 lens and we're going to review it today and it is really pretty out here um, so I'm gonna go popping up this side of this hill we're gonna go look for uh, marmots and pikas again to get some good footage and some photos and test this lens out see how well it does uh, earlier this morning I was out at uh, hang on just a second so I don't fall down this little gully thing here oh almost slipped uh, this morning I went out to look for one of the foxes in town around Anchorage and found uh, a male and a female fox and they were pretty cooperative this morning and it was a perfect low light situation it was about five in the morning and uh, wasn't a whole lot of light it was heavy heavy cloud cover um, right here it's not bad it's a real diffuse light here right now but anyway it was really really heavy cloud cover not a whole lot of light so forgot how spoiled I was with an f4 or a f2.8 lenses all the time and shooting at f8 and all that real dark light I had really dropped that shutter speed about half what I normally use and, and bump that ISO up so I'll be interested to see how those pictures turn out and we'll review those later in this video and go through them so I'm really curious how those Fox pictures turned out hopefully pretty good um, I also went out yesterday when I picked the lens up from the uh, camera shop from Stewart's I went straight out and uh, shot some seagulls and found some babies out there seagull babies uh, chicks and photographed them so and it was pretty good light and uh, I initially looked at those pictures real quick when I pulled them off the camera and they were pretty sharp I was pretty pretty impressed with the quality so far so I'm gonna finish getting up this hill here and uh, see what we can find and go test this lens out and uh, I'm already seeing several ground squirrels everywhere so we should be able to get those guys to come in today again and get some more good pictures and but uh, yeah let's get after it. I'm gonna finish getting up this hill I just dumped my glasses off my head here oh got them <laughs> nope dropped them oh. anyway I'm gonna get up this hill and we'll get after these pictures and I'll talk to you here in just a bit right now I'm doing my obligatory come up here hike up here lay down this beautiful beautiful ground cover here just super super soft super com comfortable and right here looking for the pike is and the ground squirrels again I think they're the ground squirrels I can always get to come in so they're really good to be testing lenses out this time of year and they're cute and fun to watch one thing I noticed this morning at distance um, this lens had a problem hunting and even when I would go single point it would hunt a little bit I thought that was interesting now the light was pretty low um, could be something I was doing but I thought it was really weird that it, when I try to a couple times try to set a single point it would jump back and forth and I know what I think the if I remember correctly the minimum distance is only 2.9 feet and I'm looking at stuff that's 60 80 feet from me at least and it would kind of uh, kind of search a little bit kind of focus breathe and search uh, kind of go blurry I would change the mode and it go right to it so it's, it's really weird I think it's just probably something I was doing but worth the note that I did have a little oddity with it this morning so it's a little late in the day I normally come out here but it is gorgeous um, you can't see with this camera but up the top of that little rocky peak is real there's some fog and cloud cover the clouds actually drop about in this level so that you could be in here being clouds sometimes where I'm sitting there's a chance of rain so I did bring the rain cover for the camera and the lens let's hope I don't have to use it today because this lens is not weather sealed so that's one of the things about it 
well, I guess I can cover the lens a little bit right now. So it is, uh, I'll pan around the hill a little bit. So this lens, let me get it out of the bag while I'm here. This lens is at uh, 4.5 to f8 on the, on the aperture range. Uh, super light. It's 1.3 or 1.4 pounds. Extremely, extremely light. Uh, with the R7 being at 1413 also, you're talking about a uh, under 3 pound rig. So this thing is 2.6, 2.8, somewhere in there. Uh, super, super light. Super, super small. Um, it does not come with a lens hood, but luckily uh, the camera shop had a lens hood. This is a, uh, a JJC. It's not the Canon lens. I believe the same lens that fits a 7300 Canon fits this. Uh, it's a 67 millimeter uh, thread on it. So it's an oddball size thread. Again, same as the 7300 if you have it. Um, it uh, the throw on the, folk, on the uh, zoom is only about a quarter turn, so it's really good. It's a real small throw. Um, everything feels, I mean, it, it's, it's a polycarbonate, um, this is what it looks like with the lens hood on. It's a polycarbonate type, uh, plastic. It's not metal or anything like these, like the EF lenses. And, um, uh, it, it, like I said, it's super light. It's just so nice to, I've had it in the truck here for the last day or so. And I was, this morning I was coming across, there was a moose and her calf crossing right in the middle of a road right there in the middle of Anchorage. And. This was sitting in the passenger seat because I could just go over and grab it and out the window, take the shots real fast, and then throw it back in the seat. And after I did that, I was like, oh, that's pretty nice to have a 1 to 400 that felt even lighter than my, you know, 14 to 35 lens. And just pick it up, take the shot, and put it back down. It's pretty cool. Uh, the buttons, the standard buttons, you've got stabilizer on and off, you've got your autofocus on and off. And you have a lock, and so when you put it in 100, you can lock it. This doesn't have any lens creep. It doesn't, you know, drop when you pick it up like some lenses. The barrel will come down. And this is a, this is a telescoping uh, barrel. Make sure I got the lock off. But it is a telescoping um, barrel. It does, you know, it, it, it tracks and extends when you zoom in and out. It's not like the SETI 200 where it's all internal on the EF. That is. And these guys are really barking at me. It does not have stabilizer mode, it's just one stabilizer mode. It does have IS in the lens, which is, is really good. Uh, so far, I've been fairly impressed with it. Uh, you know, it is F8, um, but you know, the 1 to 500, 7.1. Anyway, I'm going to start working on these guys, see if I can find some, get some pictures of this lens, do like I did with the last couple lenses, you know. Just take some general shots for quality, which I did a little bit yesterday. And then we'll get down and see what we've got good shots we can produce from this lens. But uh, I'm going to get after it and see what we can find. It is a gorgeous day out here today. Talk to you just here in a bit. This is pretty fun. Uh, I finally got my flower shot with the pikas today. Um, and he's barking at me. He's not happy with me yapping, I guess. Um, yeah, he went down here, down the hill from me. I mean, it's an okay shot. It's, uh, of course, I'm using this super budget $600 lens. And I wish I had my 500 F4 with me. This is all I brought today on purpose to make me not switch lenses when I see stuff like that. Um, Hopefully it's a pretty good shot. It's downhill from me. As you can see here, straight downhill. And he, it kind of curves back flat. So I'm sh shooting down on him. I got low on my belly shooting the picture. Problem is the background behind him comes up. So the background's real close behind him. He did get on a couple of rocks, but I wasn't, he was just there for a second. I really wasn't quick enough to hit him. Um, this lens does, I'm seeing right now, it does 
it may be the case I have on it. It's not that it's struggling. It's just I'm focusing. I'm, I'm focused on a real small animal too, and he's he's down there where it's just about as he's about as small as I want to have him. You know, I don't I don't want him to get any smaller in the frame. And it uh, would since I'm laying close to the ground and I've got foreground in front of me and the middle that I could, that I'm shooting over. Every once in a while, I grab that middle ground, that, that flowers or something. It would it's, it'd pull back off that mouse, uh, or the, sorry, the pikas, back to that area. And I didn't see that behavior with the 600, but I didn't really have that kind of scenario going on. And uh, it makes sense why, because there's a couple of flowers and pieces of grass that were between me and it. And I can see it, the algorithm going, okay, the it's catching the ear more than the eye. On that pika that's how far away once it gets farther away this lens has a little more trouble it looks like of picking things out compared to the big whites now don't that doesn't mean this is bad it just means you know you're that's the difference in a four thousand and you know ten thousand dollar lens versus a six hundred dollar lens um but yesterday when i had really good light because the light right now is crap um it's it's really diffused which is good so if i was shooting a real fast prime at 28 7200 or a f4 type lens or some 5.6 this would be you'd like this light uh, there's it's, it's gray there's a little bit of yellow behind me because the sun's actually now starting to peak out but it's still really diffused so when the light really comes like it's trying to do right now this is great light but when i was shooting that pika it that sun went behind a cloud so it was diffused on top of this and i've got this really heavy fog cloud moving in on me and I hope it doesn't have moisture in it because this is not a weather sealed lens. Now I did bring the uh, lens coat raincoat so I can put this on it if it looks like it's going to get a little wet. Um, so I keep shooting because uh, I, if it rains, I don't stop. I think the rain can make the coolest pictures. Now this wind blowing off these the snow up here is making this wind a little cool. So again, I wish I had brought my light gloves with me. That's rolling in really fast. So I'm either have really cool pictures or uh, scrambling for the rain cover here in a second. I love hearing the songbirds up here. But so far I've had three pikas go by within the first five, 10 minutes. Getting here, uh, heard them chirping when I got here. I've seen ground squirrels. I'm hoping the ground squirrels come in close to me um, so we can get some pictures like we did last time. But I'm happy that I got the pika, pikas. I keep saying pikas, pikas. Uh, may not even say that right. Maybe pikas, for all I know. Um, luckily, they're just real close here. And he came. He came really close to me at first, and he went down the hill. So, uh, but so far, impressions on this lens as using it. Uh, it's really good. I like the focal range. I'm con not concerned, but I'm noticing that it at distance when something smaller in a frame, it's having a little bit of trouble. Uh, finding it's not not even finding it. it just kind of goes out there and doesn't focus on anything a couple times um i think the i think with this lens maybe you need to put it on super sticky on the uh the far left on you know instead of the default case in the middle there's you know three settings for stay on the subject you're on and then maybe that won't grab the mid ground i'll have to test that a little bit more but than that there's another pika way up the hill you couldn't see him on this this is like 14 millimeters or 20 millimeters um but yeah i mean so far i mean for six hundred dollars i'm really impressed with this uh, when i look at the quality yesterday it's really good so we'll do some more testing and uh i, th I think for small far subjects i it, it may not be a great lens yesterday when i shot i thought well, this is just phenomenal today i'm seeing some of the drawbacks of six hundred dollars um but we'll see some more these pikas are a good test because they scurry like this guy scurried up the top of the rock, off the rock, off the rock. So one of the things I'll see is how quick, you know, does this acquire something when I go to it? How quick does it turn on when it goes? Because they go to sleep all the time, these mirrorless cause your cameras do. How quick does it wake up? So a lot of those little factors come in where you're sitting, waiting like I am on an animal, and then he pops up just out of nowhere on top of a rock because these things are hard to make out. Can you get that thing out of wake, get the picture, get it focused, get the picture? Um, a lot of my reaction times missing these guys on top of rock is my fault. I'm not as decisive enough. The camera's getting there before I am. I'm just 
you're trying to wait make sure it's focused before you pull the trigger and then you see it focus you go oh i should have pulled the trigger and you know you're, you're it's my my reflexes but anyway i've been going back to photographing these guys i'll talk to you here in a bit and i'll let you know if that's really is a is an issue with something small in the frame um i was really hoping that this would be and so far i think it's i think it still will be my 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 hypothesis was that this camera and this body, six hundred dollars plus fifteen, at around two thousand dollars, that this would be your, you know, travel wildlife. You know, when you want to carry something small in your suitcase on on the road, uh, keep it in your car type thing, uh, always at the handy, and a starter wildlife lens. I have to stop because this pike is real close to me on a rock here. So let's. So at some point, I've got to review this. I footage monopod. This thing is phenomenal. The cool thing about it is it has this uh, quick release top and bottom, and so you can turn this into a hi-hat. And with this monopod, it will even hold this rig as a, almost like a tripod, even with this setup like you know on this pole uh, it's pretty nice it holds my 14 to 35 holds this it will barely hold my you you can hold it you have to be careful with the 7200 with the extender it's really cool but this is the uh, setup i use to record the viewfinder it's a ninja 5 atomos what well, makes it really kind of complicated how to show you guys this and why it's really hard to do especially birds in flight you can no longer look through the viewfinder or the LCD. You can only see through this. And to get your longer lenses lined up with your subject handheld is a nightmare. On this mono, this little hi hat now that I got it set, you know, down here low, it's really nice. It's really good to be able to take this monopod out, and this thing is super steady. I'll do a review on this. I'll I'll do that in the next week. Um, this thing is so good. It's so light, so sturdy. Like I said, even sitting on this with the pod, and this thing will extend. Tall. I'm 6'5", and this thing goes way above my head. It is great. And I guess you could beat a bear with it, too, if you needed to. Um, just something extra for him to eat, I guess. But, but anyway, that's how I have to record that for you guys to see what's in the view. And it's, uh, it's a little tricky. Well, I even see a little... Uh, hike is way on that snow out in front of me so i'm trying to get a little bit of this footage for you but i thought i'd just discuss that real quick why it's a little harder to capture birds especially fast birds in flight and um it's a little easier with the big 500 i guess because maybe that barrel's easier to kind of angle and i'm more used to it this one's a little harder um i keep seeing pikas but they're just it's not even worth wasting the digital space on the card. And I'm afraid I may fill this card up today. I think I see two pikas, but they're just at the edge where they're just too small in the frame. They wouldn't be a good picture. Um, I'm trying to find one along the grass again where I was having problems where it was foc and it's focusing on the mid ground instead of where the subject was. And I'm trying to test this a little bit. Um, but I got to get another one to do what I want it. There's a ground squirrel, but I want a pika. I want something that blends into the terrain. And it makes sense why it, because sometimes it focuses ear instead of its eye, if the eye is kind of the wrong angle. And all these rocks in here have black spots on them from the moss and stuff, the ground cover that grows on them. 
So it looks like little eyes everywhere, and that's even me, I'm looking, I think I see something move like a butterfly or a piece of grass move along these rocks. And my eye will jump, and I think I see it because I see that little black bit of ground cover, moss, whatever it is on these rocks. It looks like an eye. And my brain figures out that's not an animal, that's just the rock. I have a ground squirrel, literally. Let me see if I can turn this. Oh, he ran away. He's literally right there. And there's another one up there. Let's see if he comes close here. I'll put the camera this way while I talk. They will get within just like a couple feet of me, which is pretty funny. Um, they're pretty fun. This one I see above me, I think, is a baby. I can picture that one. Oh, no, I'm not. He went in his den. He looks a lot smaller than the other ones, and I am crooked, so I'll get out real quick. Oh, I'm still really crooked. Fix this. So yeah, that one up there, I hope it comes out. There's coming out again. I think that's a baby. Looks a lot smaller than the other one. So I'm going to stop this real quick, get some pictures and video of this guy. And I'll get back with you because I haven't seen a small one like this. Talk to you in a bit. I think I'm fixing to head off this mountain. I've been up here about three or four hours and the pikas were here pretty good when I first got here. They've gotten kind of quieter, um, but every time I start to pack up, I start to see some. Ground squirrels have been everywhere, even had a few babies. And, uh, but it's getting pretty cold right now. Let me show you around me. I don't know if that showed up, but uh, the clouds are moving in on me. I mean, they're moving on top of me. They're actually, I'm going to be in the cloud here in a minute or two. Uh, I knew it was supposed to have a chance of rain today, but it's getting cold. It's probably 40 or less. And of course, I'm just wearing a real thin UV shirt to keep the bugs off of me. Wish I brought my sweatshirt. So it's getting pretty cold. So I'm going to pack it up, head back down this mountain. Give me some lunch and I'll go to the house and I'll start looking through this footage and uh, we'll see how this uh, camera performed. 
right now I can tell you it's pretty nice to have a zoom again uh, my 7200 I use a lot that's kind of what I use in the, it was the place of this thing would be because I could put a 1.4 or a 2 times extender on that 7200 and and be basically what this is actually better aperture but this is so good because it's just so light so easy to use it's, it's really comfortable um, the images I hopefully they're gonna come out good because I was able to zoom in and focus again at f8 you have to think about your uh, your aperture and you know your backgrounds but uh, for the most part it's pretty good it performs well feels well um, didn't have any problem you know it's like I said it's only a quarter turn throw so it's really easy to zoom in and out I mean I had ground squirrels coming up you know almost touching me and of course they were in my bag and they, they're a little bit comical up here the longer you sit the more comfortable they get with you if you got your back to them I had one that kept he just wanted to get real close to me and bark at me and, and so it's pretty fun so it's fun to catch those guys but um, I did get the pike with the flower in his mouth I hope that comes out but and I hope this video is shaking because I'm starting to shake a little bit I'm so cold so I'm getting off this mountain I'm freezing All right, I am off that little bit of mountain. It always chilly, chilly, chilly. Just show you where I was. Where you see all that cloud. All that layer there. I was above that. <laughs> so that, uh, all that where you see that little cloud layer back there. I was right above that. And it's, uh, all that here's what's coming in on me so i think it's time to go the light is so i guess pretty good test this lens because this light is just there is none i mean it's just <laughs> there's just there's no light so had a little bit of light diffused through the sun which is back here behind me but it's gone so I guess pretty good test of lens so you know we'll be able to see what we got I was able to shoot it uh, under a thousand ISO the whole time I'm um, getting up to 800 a thousand on shutter speed real easy so not bad so I'm gonna get out of here and I will talk to you guys when we get to the house all right, I'm back here at the house, and this is actually the day after because I didn't do any recording that evening because I didn't get back off the mountain like I meant to come off. As I got warm back up in the truck and I started to head down, there was another area that had a lot bigger scree field and also had a lot of low brush and uh, tall plants and stuff that I kept seeing some birds flying out of. And so I jumped out of the truck, and all I took was my keys and the R7 to 100-400, which was really awesome because I could just run and gun with that little combo because it's so light. But I didn't bring a phone or any of the action cams or the R5 or anything, my backpack. I just jumped out because I thought I was just going to go check out where those birds were flying and leave. But as I started following the birds in, I ended up being at the top of that scree pile back up the mountain again with just that, that rig, which is nice because it's so light I could just bounce right on up there. And what did I find when I went there? I found some uh, gold crown sparrows and song sparrows and found a hoary marmot, which I've been looking for. And I found some more pikas and some more uh, ground squirrels and stuff. And it was really cool. A um, lot bigger field there and I saw a lot more activity. And what's funny is we'll look through these pictures and I'll show you a picture of what it really looks like. It's 70 or actually, sorry, 160 millimeters, which is still quite a far in, but how hidden how camouflaged those marmots and those pikas are it's pretty cool because they play but where's waldo with the uh with the with the hoary marmot what we'll do first is we'll, we're going to do an image review here so this video i'm going to do probably real i'm trying to make i'm going to cut this down shorter just show you sections of images you know good and bad and draw a conclusion at the end of this of what i think of this lens and uh 
and uh, body combo. This is actually the R7 with, uh, I don't know if you can see it here on the desk, but this is the R7 with the 7200 with the 1.4 extender, which is normally what I'd run instead of the 100 400, but this is still probably six pounds, maybe, maybe a little bit more, maybe more than that. It's heavy, <laughs> but that other rig is so easy to light run around. But what we'll do first is we're going to go through the first day right when I got the camera. And what these images are going to be, these are going to be of the seagulls in really good light. Now let's look at these where they're, um, these will be more of a quality check. Let's see what we got. So here's our state flower of Alaska. It's a forget-me-not. Beautiful little flower, a little blue. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is pretty good. Let's go to the next one. A little bit of motion blur. I'm at 640th of a second, so I'd expect to see motion blur as he's preening. Um, why was I at that? Because I was trying to drop my ISO. I dropped it into 400. But you'll see where he's not moving. I mean, this is really, really good. The flowers look good. Um, keep moving. Now, this is what you get at F8. So this is one of the reasons why we try to shoot F4s, 2.8s, get those as low as we could. This bird is probably about half the distance to me, probably a little closer to me, but almost half distance from me to the bird to the far shore. So basically what we have is, you know, here's your two, like these two are your banks, and the bird's sitting, like this is me. I'm, it's not quite middle, but it's a little closer to me, but not by much. What you'd want is that bird a lot closer to me and then farther away. Since it's sitting about halfway, what we're going to get is we're going to get this background still going to be somewhat in focus. Yeah, it's blown out. Now, when you zoom in, if you wanted to crop in tight, it's a little more blown out, but you can still see that tree. So at 2.8 F4, this would have blown out more. So that's the only thing about an F8 or F F11 like the last video. You would want to, there's no way I could close the distance because I'm on a platform on the other side of the creek. But if I was on the bank, I'd try to get on that bank as close as I could. And I love this little gnarly old moss colored stump. I love these flowers. I wish these flowers covered more this direction. But really we're looking at, I was wanting to see a little bit of, a, you know, what kind of detail. And, and that feather detail is great. He's a little wet because he's been in the water. His beak's a little wet. Um, this detail is really can't zoom any closer on that eye, which I could, but I could, but the detail looks good. The colors look great. Um, yeah, here he is. His, his eye is tack sharp. Um, again, the bird is close to the bank. He's the background's closer to that. So the background's going to be in focus and at F 7.1, it's going to be really focused. So I was shooting at 200 millimeters on this on purpose, uh, just to frame the bird a little better. Um, still not great framing, but um, this detail is nice. This lens in the middle, in this area, it really sharp. You get to the edges, it gets, watch uh, Gordon uh, Lang's video, he talked about this, and uh, this lens is extremely clear, crisp and clear and sharp in the middle. It's a little, little soft on edges, but you know what? We're wildlife photographers. We could give poop concern about what these corners look like. A lot of times we're vignetting anyway, dark light, color, something anyway, because we're wanting the focal point to be on our animal or our subject. So we, the corners are an afterthought. So even there's even times where I turn the profile off to get more vignette, a natural vignette from the, the lens. But this de this quality, I mean, there's all this feather detail. This is This is really good quality, I think, this lens so far. Let's move on a little bit. Let's just take these for giggles, just because they're in flight above me. And I just want to say, is the lens fast enough to capture bird in flight? Okay, these first two are me. And I, I hit the, I was hitting the shutter button before it locked on. So I'm still trying to find the bird in the frame. This one is really hard, because again, when a bird's full in frame on your camera, when you're doing it, the one to 400 was easier, because I'm doing it at 225, because I could zoom out. If I was at 400, this bird ought to got a piece of him. I wouldn't got all of him. So I had to drop down to 225, which is whatever that 1.6 is, so 300 and something. I zoomed down and I could get this bird. And guess what? This bird is tack sharp. And he's gliding. He's not, he's just getting, he's going to his glide. That eye is tack sharp. I see feather detail in his belly. I love this. The light was, this light was bright, but it was diffused. And it's really cool. It looks like an x-ray right there. But uh, the day, you know, the little bit of blur here because I'm shooting it now, oh, 1600. Little blur on the tips, but everything else looks good. 
and you won't see you should not see any rolling shutter in these pictures again the rolling shutter comes from rapid movement and rapid change of movement so with the trees when you're moving real fast with them and your subjects one still one's not uh, bird flapping his wings and he goes to the top starts to change his direction that's where you'll get it and at the bottom same way and if you look at it a lot of times it doesn't ruin your shot and we'll i've shown you examples already and we'll see some in here did it ruin my shot but for starters we're looking at image quality and that is tack sharp let's go to the next one a little bit of motion blur in here and it could have been me um everything else looks good the head's the only place i'm seeing the motion blur so this may have been moving his head some way or me too i'll go to the next one once we can find the bird this one this is just a uh, motion blur and i'm off and it's because the bird's not where i wanted to be yeah it's out of focus my focus point may may have let off of it or something i i guarantee actually i know what happened to these the focus point wasn't there yet it was trying to find the bird and i didn't hit it i just got a little greedy um, it happens Let's look at these. These are quality shots here. I like this guy in the log. Uh, there's a bunch of pictures of this guy. There's a bunch of feathered shots. I just like that these forget me nots that he started scratching. That's great detail. A little blown out right here in these whites. Um, probably should. If you look at my histogram, I under, I tend to underexpose, especially if I got a white bird, and I still had. It doesn't show in the histogram whites blown out, but there is these whites right here. They may not be blown out, but they look like they are. But look at the eye, the beak detail, the, the legs, the feather detail. This is this is this lens is good. Let's look at these forget me nots down here. Yeah, see they're they're perfect. Let's keep moving. So I just like that he's scratching. Anytime they do something different that's not your normal pose, I'm I'm snapping that camera. And he's just preening, cleaning himself. I mean, you know, this detail is well, if I can get the right spot. I mean, you can see all the little red in his beak, a little red around his eye, his feather detail. Again, his feet and the rock, they all look good. Trying to, oh, there we go. That's cute. That's, so he's trying to dry out. So he's looking a little fluffy. A little bit, a bit of motion blur here. We're shooting at 1600 a second again. But again, with the F8, you know, like I told you before, now, but I'm at 400 millimeters instead of 200 something. So as you increase that focal distance, you know, I'm increasing this blur. So um, it's getting a little more, but some of the stuff still showing up high. But if you're zooming, you're cropping in, or even you know, if you need to, you see how it starts to, to blow out a little bit more. On this day, everything was working pretty good. It was grabbing the birds pretty fast. It was grabbing them in flight pretty good. A lot of it's, you know, is it lock and did you lose lock? Did you do something to cause you to lose lock? Or did you have the right, you know, amount of light? A lot of things. I keep saying, you know, yourself, you have to check yourself when you're taking these pictures. You know, was it good? Was it you or was it it? You know, was the camera? The camera's smarter than we are. But uh, all I have to say, this lens is really sharp. Um, things that weren't my, that I didn't screw up. I, mean, I think they look good. Let's go find some more images. These here, I just was shooting through the limbs just to see, will it get distracted? Because there's a lot going on here and it locked on that eye and it stayed on the details good. Um, you know, look at all that in the eye. It's all, all tack, all good. And what you can see this blur in here because I'm shooting through. There's a gap in this pine tree I'm shooting through. And there's grass down here. And you can see a little rolling shutter right here. So it's this middle and it's rolling. And that's from me, nothing else, because the bird's not moving. But with that, did it ruin the image? No. If you didn't have these other two on both sides to know that was rolling shutter, there's nothing, there's no stretch. I do have a picture of a fox where it did stretch the fox a little bit, but as long as it doesn't stretch or m mess with your subject, you're good. Let's look at this gull real quick. Yeah, look at that. Look at that detail. Let me do this again because I screwed it up. Let's quick check it. That way I can enlarge it good. Quick check full screen. Zoom in on that eye. Look at there. That's good quality to me. That lens is, re this lens is really sharp. 
And at F8, since I'm at 400 probably on this, I'm guessing, um, 359, not even at 400, but by doing that, this bird was closer to me, so this starts blowing out more. So I was trying to get him, I didn't get all his tail, I've got some shots of all his tail, but again, I'm trying to see, does things distract, how does it look, clarity, I mean, this, that, seagull feathers are hard to catch, and it got it, so we did really good, especially on a bright day like it was here. So my, uh, on the day one, I think it was really good. Um, nothing really jumped out at me that was really bad. So let's go look at the second day. So this is the main day I was shooting hard. When I first got up in the morning, this light was horrible. It's 5 a.m. There's no light whatsoever. It is completely overcast. When the fox is, was in these, uh, this grass, he's back off the trail under a huge canopy and there's no light back there at all it's dark that's what it looks like this is dark i'm shooting 3200 to so a second and it's just dark it's horrible this is uh but you know, the lens did pretty good um you might think you have soft images sometimes these are not these are pretty pretty crisp what they are um but when you have less light you're going to get more noise even though r5 i get a lot of noise with the crop sensor, when you have no light, you're shooting like in the dark, because this guy is in the dark. It, I mean, he's completely, it's completely shadowed. It's even hard to see him back there, or her. This is a female. It is it's hard to shoot. All cameras, especially these crop sensors, you will see noise even at 3200 in here. Not anything you can't work with, but when it's dark, 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 like not twilight, not blue hour, not golden hour, anything. I'm talking dark, dark, you're gonna struggle with these things. But this one's not that bad. I mean, it's, the sharpness is not there, and it's part of it's part of what I was doing at one five hundreds. We'll get into that here in a minute. I don't like shooting that low on foxes, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, add a little more light. I got up to five thousand. Just not much more noise, but the image is going to be soft because of my movement plus shooting that five hundred a second. And we're going to go through these fox pictures quite a bit because this is a good example. This lens at low light when you should or shouldn't be taking pictures. You can still take your pictures, but at F8, this is what you're going to get. Since this fox in the background is all close to them, you're going to get all this stuff's going to be in focus. So if you do that, you want to find an interesting background. This is me due to I'm at 500 of a second. And she's moving just a little bit. He's moving. I'm moving. 500 of a second at 5,000 ISO. This, this is what I'm expect to see. Where I'm there's this is the this is the uh, is this the combination one yeah this is the one that's the combination so that picture here at the end is my fault and rolling shutter well what you'll see all this it's what's weird it's on this side of the image this side's all straight and good this side of the image got all warped you'd think it would go going down but it's the right side it's just it's an odd one and since I see it more on one side or the other I know it was me not anything else nothing's moving but me. So more than likely what I did, taking that picture, I probably rotated the camera a little bit or moved myself or I took, right when I hit the shutter, I was somehow moving due to breathing, hand, something. When I did that, this, this, uh, the snout of the animal got elongated. There's where you got a ruined shot. It's not the camera, it was me. I moved. When I made the movement, even with the IS everywhere, it stored the image so this is the one example one of the few examples i can find where i've lost an image now this was mainly for factors like i said i moved rolling shutter low light all three of those factors made this you know none of these these shots were anything i'd use anyway so let's move on this set of images will be an example on how to shoot how do you want to shoot an animal we've always i've talked about getting low getting low getting low the first set of images here are me standing up shooting at the fox i'm shooting down i believe this is a male fox yeah no this is the female i can tell by her face usually all you can tell is by their tails and you'll notice her her tail's full straight not real thick but she has a black spot here and a little more white on the tip of her tail and you can tell by her face too she's a beautiful face so i'm shooting down on the fox and this is what you get you know it's all clear and the ones i get low are not perfect again either but again, I'm shooting F8. I'm usually used to shooting F4, so I kind of know with the F4 where I want to be. I'm shooting down on her. Now, these are fairly okay. I'm 1 400 a second. Her eyes look good. 
Nothing's, you know, she's losing detail in the feathers here in the back a little bit, which I expect to have at 20, you know, at this type of light. Because there is no light. You can tell. Look at this. All this darkness. And so she's still here. We're still shooting down on her. And here in a minute, look at the difference in the pictures. Same exact spot. She's just moved to the right of the trail. She's in the same perpendicular spot on the, on the trail. She's here. I'm shooting down on her. I go here. And look how much better the shot looks. This, you know, even when I had grass back here, right? This is... You know, it just looks like any iPhone shot. You get down here, I'm, I'm basically laid on the ground. I don't have my camera barrel on the ground. If I did, this would have blurred out more, and this would have been more even with her feet. So if you put the barrel of that lens on the ground, all this is going to be even. I just but I just, this, I just got a little bit. I would, wasn't trying to do phenomenal pictures. I did want to give you an example of why we get low. And what happens is you go from this to that. Well, that's the prime reason about getting low to get a better picture of your subject. Once you get an eye level or below or close to eye level, you get a more interesting shot. And it, just the way I feel, the way the emotion of a picture does for me. So I think it, I, I think it looks a lot better. Now, is it in focus? Is it, you know, is it all those things? I'm shooting 400 a second, 2500 in horrible light. And I'm still way underexposed. If I exposed more, I'd have been probably 4000. And I had to drop the shutter speed more. Um, workable, but uh, you know, it's just I just trying to get this. I tend to underexpose, but if I'm and I'm shooting twenty five hundred, I know I can underexpose and get it back in Lightroom a little bit more. But you know, I'm not out for these days trying to get the banger. But if I saw a banger, I'd probably try to go after it. And here she is. She's trying to walk towards me. Look at her eyes. Did pretty good. This is why I don't like shooting this low at four hundred. I try to get at least a thousand. And we're going to show some examples of what, in a bit where her eyes are tacked and where they're soft. When you're shooting this low, she's moving her eyes, looking around a lot, and it causes motion blur where that pupil is right there. And just enough. Gosh, she's such a pretty fox. I love this girl. Let's look at these three. This was a test of can I shoot through a subject and hit it, kind of like I did the seagull. And let's see what the answer is. Watch this. I mean, 1 500th ISO 8000, and I hit her. You can see noise in here in the blur from the tree. I'm shooting through a little bitty small gap. It's probably about this big. In the tree, I could see her through it. I just got the camera through that little spot, zoomed in as quick as I did, used single spot to hit any part of her fur. Once it hit that focal plane and I could see her eye pretty clear, then I get the eye focus and I let go as long as she's not moving. Because once I'm on that focal plane, I'm in there. As long as she doesn't move and I don't move, we're locked. So I could leave it there and I could reacquire. So I jot off these three bursts right here. And she's moving her ear a little bit. Other than that, I'm just down a little bit and you can see it. See her ear move? So we get a little more motion blur in that ear, but 8,000 ISO, I got it through. This is nothing I would ever use, but it, you know, if these limb, if these sticks weren't here, yeah, you probably could have used this. But since those sticks are, I was just seeing, can I lock onto that eye? And I got it. So that's all I was trying to do in that. I knew it wouldn't be a good picture. Now, these next ones, these are the good pictures of the day. And I'm just out here playing. You know, I just went out here talking to friends over here, looking at a couple of friends I know out there, talking to them and looking at the fox. And here we go. So these are the ones that are the good ones. So we are at 4,000 ISO. Remember, people, 3,200 stop. Can't shoot a good shot of 3,200, right? You hear all this stuff. It's all relative what you're doing, okay? No matter what ISO you're using, it depends on what the rest of your triangle is, your light sub and your subject and everything, what do you get? This picture is great. I like this picture. Even F8, right? So again, look at my exposure. When I have this, when I've got a fox and I see shadows, my he's real close to the subject, I'm going to underexpose it. If I overexpose or put it proper exposure, all this here in the black in here, I would see it. I would love to shove it more, but you'll see right here, I'm hugging. I'm losing some blacks, which is fine. I could have pushed this little piece a little more here and I would have darkened this up even more. But what I had a problem with is I may have lost her feet, which is fine in black. You'll see this picture is sharp. Look at this. Look at the eye, the nose, the ears, feet, 4,000 ISO, 270 millimeters. I'm not pushing the extent. 
and this is a good this is this is a picture I'll keep this is a one I like I'll keep all of these every one of these now did we spot it the first one's motion blur second one's not reasons because I can tell that the warp right here in this tree did that is this first shot ruined my opinion no I have rolling shutter don't care my opinion on this rolling shutter did not hurt me we've seen one image where it hurt me with a snap but it was a crap image anyway so who cares um so out of the day i had several rolling shutters but another one it's only one rolling shutter in this whole series and that's me getting pushing that button you know that initial push of moving the camera yeah i love these they're 4000 iso guys beautiful these will be part of my instagram or well, I'll see what I can do because what I can come into Lightroom and I can add, I can add, I can mask her. I can add more, drop these shadows, make this even darker in here and make it nothing. These are completely unedited images because I'm using DPP. I do not edit in Digital Photo Professional 4. I can, but it's, I'm just not used to it. I will do these in Lightroom and I'll use Topaz until DxO gets their crap together. But these will be great images. Really good images, I think, of her. Just beautiful. I love the color. The contrast, I love this. this. This color is great. I love it. Love this picture. All right, so that's the fox. So that was no light, horrible light, horrible light. Okay, when we got up here on the Hatcher's Pass, after I left the fox, I went to the Hatcher's Pass. It took me about an hour or so to get up there. And the first thing I catch is the pica, which is what I wanted. Um, pretty good. And we'll look at those images real quick. We'll look at about the eye detect. This will be a little bit the eye detect with this lens. Um, busy background. I'm at 400 millimeters. So this little guy, I mean, he's a little bitty. He's only about four, five inches long, maybe, maybe six, maybe around there. I don't know exactly. But he's small. And, uh, he's quite a ways out there. 400 millimeters is as big as I can get him in the frame. And it's real busy. If you look, this rock and this guy, the camouflage is great on these guys. Look at this. Here's the rock or the brown and the black. Here's this guy, the brown and the black. He blends in, but it still finds the eye which is good. So the algorithm works pretty good. I think we lose the eye here in a minute. Eye in, eye in, eye out. And doesn't surprise me. And if you look at this guy, it's motion blur. Look at the rock, look at everything. Everything's out. So this is not, this is more me moving at a 640th of a second. And it doesn't look like I'm moving, but I am. But apparently I, I shook somehow. It could have been a rotation of the barrel as opposed to move left and right. Um, stepping up, this one's back in focus that quickly. So we're back in focus, we're out, we're in, we're out, out, that quick. I believe I'm shooting 15 frames a second and it's locked back onto the eye again. It's good, see, on the eye, clear, look at the ground cover. This lens is really sharp. Um, when I first got there, the light was iffy, it was behind the clouds, it was diffused. You know, like you see, you don't see any shadows, right? Because it's diffused light. Look, there's almost no shadow even under his butt. A little bit because there's no light, but you know, no, no cast shadows. Everything here is good, clear. Look at that detail. You can see where the shift hurts even shedding off there. Looks great. So detail is great. Here, let's see. Yeah, we're good. There's no light. You can see even in the eyes, a little bit of blue behind me. But above me, and you see even that where the sun is, the sun looks like the moon there in these pictures because it's getting cloud covered. There's rolling shutter. You can see which one it is in. Yep, this second picture. That's straight. That's all good. That's rolling shutter. Did it run the image, right? Nope. If I don't have anything to go against, right? You can't tell. Other than that fox with a snout stretch, you can see the snout stretches that touch, but could you have told, if I gave you this picture right here, could you have told me it's rolling shutter? You could not. Because there's no, nothing to go against. There's no man-made, no straight lines, nothing to go against. And most of the time when I'm shooting wildlife, I don't have anything that's going to, you know, besides trees or grass. And if the grass is moving, because the wind been blowing, you know, those type of things. Uh, so let's move on. Look at that, the detail. It's a good lens. I'm pretty much little left on my exposure on the darks, the whites, but this is pretty balanced exposure here. It loses it here because it just lost the head. The head's gone, right? Turned his head. It's trying to lock on the body and it's locking on right back here. No, it's not even locking there. So these I just probably let off the focus button early because I didn't care anymore because he moved. 
Let's look at these. So these are really good. Oh, we'll look at all this because this will show you how far out it is at 100 millimeters, 160 that is. So I'm at 400 millimeters here, I'm sure. I didn't want this full frame. Oh, because I clicked one. My bad. Sorry, guys. Let's get them all. So let's get them all. Got to hit the shift button. That helps. All right. Here we go. All right. So we're zooming in more. All right. What do we got here? No light. Oh, getting overcast big time. Looks good. Look at that. Tack sharp. Lens is good on sharpness. Uh, it's hitting the autofocus fine. How's it going to miss this? All right. 400 millimeters. Good colors. Uh, I think I'm properly exposed in these. I'm mid, mid exposed. A lot of people say expose to the right. Yeah, you can. I expose sometimes to the right, sometimes to the left. Depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, depends on what the subject is. If the subject's real dark, I'm going to expose more to the right. Subject light like these, I'm going to expose a little more to the left or dead center. So I got over here, I want to expose more to the right. Because now I don't have to. I, I, all I have to do is the animal. If I get this, you know, nice and the color exposed, I want contrast. But uh, these are a little more to the left, a little more to the center. Um, we're still dead sharp on the eye. You can see all the clouds, the sun, everything in his eye. So this is at 100 millimeters. Just show you how he looked even at 160 millimeters. He's a little closer to me, but not real that close. Look how he blends in. So you can see real quickly, here's his eye, here's his black spot above him. You can see how that, that could get confused. And so that's what I'm going to go to here. Just a minute. I'm going to get a picture that's farther out. These all look great. Been better if he had flowers in his mouth. Let me scratch his butt. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Here's the ones that I'll talk about. About the focus on that lens and why, what's going on. And I have a bunch of these. Let's stop. Well, we're going to get all these because these are the flower pictures. All right, so what's going on? What is the focus problem? It is one user error combined with the, the limitations of that lens at distance. So you'll see this guy. I'm at 400 millimeters. Look how small he is in the lens. Remember the say, last set of pictures when I showed you 100 millimeters? How much, you know, he's a lot bigger than this in the frame. This is a real busy background, right? We got rocks, we got grass, we got flowers, and here's this guy locked on the eye perfectly. So what you'll see in these, and I'll show you where it goes bad. So we're good, we're good, we're good, we're losing good because it was been, went back here he dropped his head but the eye is still in there same place it's focused back here not on the mouse or picas now look here's what i talked about mid ground remember i have foreground mid ground subject ground and background so i really have four areas so it could have locked on that that the mouse pica or this ground or this ground so now it locked on just before him the eyes in folk in the area still locked on here not here here now it's back here that quick and here we're, we're locked on pretty good on the on here comes back to foreground again right here foreground still still foreground now it's back on now he's moved because i stopped so that was a series back there what's happening is when you got a subject far away you got a lot of clutter and i got a lot of different different levels that this thing can focus you know, different different mounds of stuff is coming up. As you hold that focus down, if you hold, hold that focus the whole time, you just, and you can test this yourself, you hold that focus down with that lens and that body, and you, if you hold it down too long, that servo is continually trying to find that eye. What happens is it sees something here, and in the algorithm with that thing that far out, with that all that AI machine learning, it's it's locking on something else. It thinks it doesn't see the eye anymore. But if you hold that focus button down, the eye focus too long, it will at distance, it will start to hunt. And that's one of those things, once you've got him locked, your stuff's not moving, get the heck off that eye focus. As long as you don't move and that animal didn't move, and that's something I had to teach myself because of the 500, I don't have that problem as much. But that lens, you know, with those motors and the algorithm, it's just losing it more. This, you know, that other lens, it's, you know, it's, Really expensive big white, so they know even this one, you know, it's you know, two thousand, twenty two hundred dollars. The little motors and the focus systems and everything work a little better. It knows to stay on that a little better, but it lost it when it's a distance. So if you got a bird or something, it's really small in the frame, and it's got other stuff around it, limbs, leaves, grass, whatever, and you hold that focus down too long, it's continually looking. 
So once you're locked on and not does move and get your finger off of it, and if you need to require it, hit it. But don't, if, you, if I stayed on it for like three seconds, two seconds, if it wasn't completely clean, it would start to, it would go blur. It's just, everything's going to blur. It's just go voop, voop. So it's almost like it's a focus breathe for a second. And then you get it back on it. And that's what's happening here is focus on the wrong thing. So that's, so I, I $600, live with it. That's what I'm, my, my opinion is with that. Um, pretty good. Now I lost it here for a second. Don't know why. But it's right back on it pretty quick. But yeah, so that's it. Let's see if we can find the flowers. See, there it is again. So we're focused on this guy real well, fairly. It's, it's not really hitting the eye exactly. You can see this is it's hitting around in here on his body. Probably had body lock, not an eye lock. Wait, where does it go out? There it went out. Oh, no, this was out to start with. I didn't have it at the beginning. So I don't know why I was pulling the shutter when he's not in focus. It's, it's, oh, you know what it was? I had it happen, so I hit the button. I was focused out here on him, had his eye, and then it started to go out and I hit the button just to show you that it was hitting right here in front of him on the flower. See, they're right in front of his face, too. And then the next one, same thing, same thing. Then it goes off here to the back because it's just kind of doing this number. And right into the lens, it looks like a big blur. Now it's going all the way to the back. See? And it's completely at the back. Then it comes back once he lifted his head up. So he's going to lift his head up. Boom. And yeah, these are the shots I wanted. See there? That's motion blur right there because I'm shooting one hundreds. He moved his head so fast. But this is what I've been after. I want him with these flowers in his mouth. This is the shot I've been wanting. I want him on a rock with these. So let's just go through. But these all look really good um, with this flower in his mouth. They all look good. Um, even when he turns a little bit, we're still good here. Still good there. So he's still locked on. He didn't grab this rock. Didn't grab that. So this thing happening is, is you know, it doesn't happen every time. But if you're really holding that a long time, you'll get it. Let's go to the ones. These are the ones that I really like. So there's a couple in there I'll keep for sure. Even though I was out just playing around. Then we'll go to this guy. These are the ones with the flower that I love, I love, I love, I love. There he is. Brighten that flower up, get it a little cleaner. Neat picture. F8. Blowing out a little bit, but once I get in here, if I got him cropped in tighter, it looks, you know, the bouquet is okay. But yeah, we're all in focus. I'm at eight hundredths of a second again, one eight hundredth. I should have been shooting faster because I'm at 1,000 ISO. I could have jumped. And here's why. All good. And he did. I did not expect this to happen. Motion blur. If I would have been at 2,500, 3,200 of a second, this would have stopped him. And I'd have had an awesome shot with the little flower right there. In midair, midair again. Look at that. Mall motion blur. Because this is dead stopped right here. Like all this is in focus. I didn't move the. I didn't really see. I didn't. I did a good job. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pan that camera when he does that. Now this is split second too. If you keep that camera as still as you can, and you know, I had the right shutter speed, that would all have been in no motion blur. Can I get it back in Topaz? I don't think so. I think I'll get a little, I'll get a little of that motion blur back at Topaz with the AI, but I'll still figure out if I can do something to that picture. That one I think is, eh, maybe. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm out here trying to test this lens as opposed to get that money shot, and I didn't expect to see that. All right, here we go. Let's look real quick. I've gotten low. I've got the background blown out. I've got him where I want him. I repositioned myself a little bit when he came down. Got a little sneaky kind of crawl on him. 400 millimeters, 640 per second, 1000 ISO. What I was trying to do here is trying to keep that ISO low just to see what I could do at lower shutter speeds. Because I'm at F8. Um, yeah. Again, the light's crap. Light's gone now. See, if you look in his eye, it's all gray cloud behind me. A little bit of blue behind me. And, this, you know, it just moved in. Eventually, the clouds came literally on top of me. I was in the cloud, and it was blowing through. You can see sometimes in the video, in the first half of the video, you can see how washed out I am, and this looks clear because that cloud was just kind of coming through. And the 
camera couldn't focus through it. But these all look great. Again, I got low on the ground where all this little miniature ground cover looks like little trees and it's really pretty stuff. Look at this. Love all that in there, that texture along with this picus. And just, I think that was the end of it. Yep. But again, you know, I got low, got in here, got him all nice and clean. I mean, $600 lens, guys. Come on. Couldn't ask for more. Well, you can. We can always ask for more. All right, let's get into the ground squirrels. These aren't bad pictures. Ground squirrels are easy. They get in close. You can get that. Look at all the back. Everything's blown out with that F8 because I've got him. Let's look at the detail real quick. Look at that. Lens is sharp. Lens is really sharp. Uh, I thought this was, I guess it, it was better because I could zoom in and out and stuff. And it was even a little sharper than this. I would, I'd say it's sharper, as sharp as. I mean, look at this detail. You can see every little of that cloud in that eye. Claws look good. I think it look good. I had worse light here than I had with the 600-800 video. I mean, the light just disappeared on me. Uh, let's see if I got anything interesting. Here we go. These are cute. Look at these. Grounds, I love ground squirrels. They're fun. They're just a blast. They come right up to you. They get these goofy little expressions. This one's out. A little bit of uh, one one thousandths. This was this was me. I'm sure. It's motion blur. I'm underexposing. See here again, but I'm not all the way against that line. I've been hitting around in here a lot, and I just I just. I like this richness of this when I underexpose. I could have done it after effect, but I was trying to get it in camera as much as I needed and keep my ISO low. Yeah, this one's clean, good texture. Oh, sorry, good good image. Uh, was that? No, that's not image blur. That's just camera rotation. Here we are. I like these. The reason I like these is because of, look here. We've got other textures in the frame, and it's kind of partially blown out. With Here's my foreground as I get that barrel low amongst the grass to get this blur. But I have middle ground with him. That's somewhat in focus to give color. Got a little yellow. Again, these I shoot raw and see raw. But I was shooting raw this day. And raw images are flatter, just like when you shoot C-log on video. This image is flatter than if you shot JPEG. But I shot JPEG, these colors have been brighter. I don't want that. I want to pick the, you know, take the, the flat colors where I can recover any shadows, any colors, stuff like that by shooting raw. So these images will look a lot better once they're processed. All right. Okay. In the video, I talked about the baby. This is the baby, the baby squirrel. So it was a baby, which is cool. And I still see smaller at a distance. So when I got the 400 millimeter, I got more 400 millimeters of throw, I could see him better. And here he is. Here's his little fuzzy fluffness. His little arms are a little shorter. Claws are banging. See how much smaller his head is and round. But again, what's cool is look at this ground cover. You got color or red contrast with him. These are all in focus. I mean, he couldn't miss his eye. I have in the video where you saw where it did the focus thing because it, it grabbed the wrong ground. I took a lot of pictures of this little guy, but they're, most of them are the same. Actually, is these, let's go from here to here. Here we go. It it missed, and it got the twig. You know, I was testing that on purpose. They got it this time, though. It missed the twig. Got his little eye peeking over the ridge. I think that was cute. There we go. We're lifting our head up a little bit. And that little fuzzball. Did good. Um, got his eye, got everything. You know, there's other distractions in here. Because really, look at this. It's not that close. I mean, it's, I'm at 400 millimeters, so he's out there. He was halfway up the hill. His little chubby head on. And you can tell it's a little juvenile by the shape of his head compared to the parents. Parents' heads have that little square notch at the top. Is there anything different in here? Nothing. Yeah, he did good. Uh, the, the colors are good. The quality is good. Anything else? Um, these are pretty cute. I like these. I like the isolation. See, I like all this extra foreground blur and him. I really like that picture. I like that a lot. That's a good picture, in my opinion. Framed correctly, in my opinion. I think, see, oh, this is all tack sharp. He's in the flowers where I wanted him. Or her, whatever it is. These are nice, too, right here. Yeah, I like these. Especially if you get in tight. Look how that all blows out back there. Bokeh. 
All right. Just to show you what it's looking like around me. Look at that. So this is all below me. It's coming towards me. So all that rolled in literally right on top of me. All right. So that was all the hike, the hikers. That was all the pikas and the marmots where I was at the first spot. And then when I left off the hill, I was cold. It was time to get out of there. So I got back in the truck, got warmed up, went down the hill, saw another spot I wanted to look at. I saw a bunch of birds go across the front and across the road, went over there in that brush. And I thought, let's go get some birds. So as I'm walking over, one of the things this lens is really good at is this right here. I just had shooting down to my feet real quickly. And I would just flowers below my feet it works like a great macro you're standing straight up 400 millimeters do that right there and you can get these type shots of flowers look at that i mean it's, it's didn't do it perfect but if i'd have taken more time or i use my macro lens i mean but that 100 400 you can do this with them you know you can get some neat little flower shots again i, I didn't really i just took it real quick and went moved on all right so let's look at these bird these so this is a shot i would never take as trying to take a good shot, right? I just saw this uh, uh, sparrow in the trees. Let's hit him. And it came out clean, pretty good. Um, you know, song sparrow. So just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bird. A little out of focus there. But this is a this is the one of those tough ones, you know. You got all this just garbage around him, and it, it found the eye, got pretty good focus on the bird, pretty good detail. I'm at uh, 1250, 1000 IS, uh, shutter speed, 1250 on the ISO. Uh, bumped to 2000 ISO. A little more, little more to the right, you know. You can see I've got a. I had some brighter stuff. Thought, well, let's get this a little better. I can darken it up. Uh, looks good. Let's move into ones I would take. So these, he kept landing on these uh, different little limbs. So we'll do this series real fast. See what we got. So land on top of these. There we go. Look at that, F8. Now the good thing was he's on this. I could move myself. If I was standing straight up and where I was originally, I would have had this stuff at the bottom right behind it. But I went ahead and uh, move to the right where I could get down and I can move this, you know, this, this taller one behind was right behind it and moved a little bit uh, and then got it a little more isolated where I got the bird isolated and there we go. Now you've got the little milky backgrounds you want. Another good isolation shots. Let's look at this little few of these here. So what I did between, let's back up, let me add this other two images. I had this image before it just to show you. This is the exact same perch as birds on. So here I'm standing, I'm shooting towards the this bird, and I've got the mountain, but it's sloping right here. This mountain is just on the left corner, the top left corner of the frame. So I shot those shots I did before to get this guy. And I thought, let's move my feet three feet to the right and shoot him again. And this is what we get. So now I'm shooting, because this, this, this corner here is right up here at this corner here. Top left of this one is the bottom right of this one. So I just moved a little bit to the right, and now this mountain that was over I was shooting at now is off to the right, and now I've got clouds. That's what the clouds look like behind it. So now I've got all this. So I've got a cleaner background, I guess you could say. I like the green a little bit better myself. And now I've got more of clouds behind the bird as opposed to having the mountain behind the bird. And this is what we get. We get these, you know. The reason I framed it way over there, this would be one I would really make this about half that take half that top off make it a long skinny shot more same bird all right here we go into a um, it's the gold crown sparrow didn't get the greatest shots of this guy um it was still not bad um, that was not good there we go that's better you got the even little white feathers on the bottom of his eye got his little crown there's no light, guys. This this was horrible. I mean, this you look at the skies; they're completely gone. This was the worst shooting conditions um, as far as you know, good good light. There's just no light out here. So this was this was the this was the toughest conditions you're going to shoot in, and we were getting okay. And, and then we found this guy. I hadn't seen one in a few days, and I found him finally. 
This is a hoary marmot, and these guys blend into the rocks. But uh, let's find there's some better pictures of him here in a second. Here's the hoary marmot again. Camera, okay, so this thing had to catch up. Um, it's okay. Um, there's one in here I thought was a pretty cool shot. I wish I could have, it just happened too fast. Um, it's these two shots. So I was looking at him only, and then I noticed something in the bottom right corner of my vision. Sorry. He's both. I wish I could have got these even framed. I could have, you know, uh, layered these two and got it. So I was focused on this guy in tight. Come on, it's still churning down here at the bottom right. There we go. So I saw this, and I was like, what's this? It's a pika. So the pika and this hoary marmot are doing a little stare down here. He's more concerned about me than the pika. Let me go to the next image, and there it is. But I wish I could still processing here. It'll catch up in a minute. There we go. So it's pretty clear. I wish I had both of those the same size and just you know, shot them with different focus points. And I could have gone to Photoshop and painted him back in or him back in in focus. I thought it was pretty cool. The pike is watching him. He's watching me. The pike didn't see me. This guy does. Pretty funny. Oh, both are right next to each other. And here's how far the marmot was away from me if I was 100 millimeters when I was shooting at 400. Let me get both of these in the picture so you can see. So he's not real close. At 400, I'm shooting 640 effective focal length at this, but this out, you know, 160, that's where he was. It's pretty far down the hill from me. But, but you know, like I said, lens is good, focuses on good. So here's an example of. Uh, I should do a Where's Waldo on this picture. Uh, can you find the the Hoary Marmot? I mean, it's pretty easy because I got him centered, but uh, you can see how hard they are to see in these rocks, especially all this haze. This is all cloud because the clouds are sitting right on top of me. So I'm shooting through all that cloud. So these are, like I said, these are the worst conditions to try to shoot in. I mean, here's how bad it was. I'm looking downhill, right? 400 millimeters back down to my truck, and you can't, I can't see my truck down the hill. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys, for that image review. So, conclusion on this. No, this is not it. This is the 200. Conclusion on this lens. Let's put it in perspective. $600 lens. Extremely sharp lens. I love it. Fast to focus, the nanomotors. Um, at distance, the only, the only negative on this lens I could find, at distance, well, maybe two, at distance, if you hold that autofocus down too long or busy background when he's uh, small in the frame, it's going to lose focus and regain. It'll regain the focus. But the best thing is, don't hold, if he's not moving, you're not moving, don't hold down that focus. If he's moving, it will stay on him. But when you're sitting still, not moving, it will, since you're still holding the focus, I guess it thinks you're still trying to look, and it, it for that lens, it just starts to hunt a little bit. Uh, but that's the drawback. The second is the F8. So in F8, you only have so much to work with, you you know, if you've got subject close to you. But again, know your lens. You're shooting an F8, you know what you're going to get. You're shooting F11, you're shooting F4, F2.8, you know what you're going to get. If I'm at F4 lens, I know, you know, if I want, if I'm shooting bears, I can't shoot F4. Or I'm going to get just as high as maybe a snout. I'm not going to get the rest of the body. If i got two bears, i got to move out to F11, F16. So for that 100 to 400, great. The other drawback is it's not weather sealed, so you got to watch out for that. Quality, I don't care. Six hundred dollars is good. I think my overall opinion that is a phenomenal, phenomenal starter, intermediate, even advanced person combo setup for wildlife. It is your budget wildlife setup. Six hundred dollars for that. Fifteen hundred. Twenty-one hundred dollars retail for that whole kit. I mean, I don't know of another setup you can get that you got that good eye focus. You've got that much reach. You know, you're sitting at 160 to 640 on that. The image quality is fantastic on this. I, in the center of it, it's beautiful. Even sitting towards the sides, I look it's pretty good. This was the worst conditions to shoot in over that day. I had the Fox. I had no light. Overcast. Horrible. It's back there under the trees where there's no light. And I was able to get shots of it. I had 4,000 shot at that horrible light. I go to the mountains, I think I have a little bit of light, and then all of a sudden the clouds literally moved on top of me. I'm shooting through atmosphere at two, three feet because I'm in the cloud. The clouds, even the light's coming through, there's no light. 
And that lens was able still to get detail out of the feathers, get that at f8, and I'm shooting that. I didn't shoot any wider in f8 at all. And I could, I didn't push it really high on the ISO, as you notice. I probably got to 3,200, 4,000. Highest I got was in at Hatcher's Pass. Overall, this lens is fantastic. I, I like this lens. Did I pick it up? No, I didn't buy it. The only reason I didn't buy it is I'm spending a lot of money this summer with family visiting. I have family this week. That's why I'm at a different desk. My normal studio is now back into the guest room. So I'm back here at my work desk. And, uh, that that's what's going on so i didn't pick it up i will probably pick it up later actually i, I thought about it because my nieces and people are up that like to take photographs my uncle's coming up here pretty soon um it'll be a good lens just to carry around in the truck and it's super light because this this rig's still fairly heavy but this works great and the other reason i didn't buy it is because this 7200 will do everything that that one to 400 will do with an extenders and be just as crisp and still be a little lower aperture but I miss how light that lens is already. Several times I've picked this up going, oh, this is heavy. Um, but yeah, phenomenal, guys. If you're picking that kit up, you're going to be super happy with that lens combo. I've seen a lot of people griping about that R7, and they're not putting that, that thing, they're comparing it to the R5, the R3, the R1, the A1, the Z9. Why? It's $15 camera versus the flagships. Why are you doing that? The R5, it should not even, you're not even, shouldn't even be comparing that. We didn't compare the 7D to the 5D Mark IV, so why are we comparing the R7 to the R5? It's the same type of cameras. Now, this is not the R7. I keep wondering this. This is my R5. The R7 is not the 7D replacement. It's kind of between the 90D and the 7D, somewhere in between. And, you know, will Canon put a 7D? I don't know if they will or not. I'm not too worried about it. This R7, the price point, I'm extremely happy. I use it more than I use my R5, mainly because I've been testing. Uh, I'll probably be using both bodies interchangeably. I'll probably keep two different lenses on them here going forward when I'm not having to review. Um, and I, I like it. This that that 100 400 phenomenal lens for the price. For the price, it's like wow.